What is up and welcome back guys. So in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to turn this 12 foot four by four into this awesome mailbox post. So if you go online and you actually look these things up, we're selling for over $200 a piece just because they are decorated up a bit. I'm gonna teach you how to make all of those decorative designs just using a miter saw, or you could even do this with a skill saw. So let's get started. Starting out with a 12 foot four by four, our main post is gonna be 78 inches long. This is going to allow us to leave 20 inches back to be buried and cemented into the ground and then the next part that we need to cut is going to be 28 inches long and that is going to be our cross member and as always i'm going to teach you step by step on how to make this but if you are a plans in the hand type of person head over to my description and i'll throw in a link to my etsy shop okay so now we have three boards this is just a little cut off piece we need to hang on to that because we're going to be using it here in a bit we have our main 78 inch post and then we have our 28 inch cross beam we're going to start by making some marks on our 28 inch board what i'm going to do is start by making a first mark at three quarter and then i'm going to make a mark at six and a half and then at ten this is the section that the cross member will overlap or post then we'll just draw a straight mark at those points we'll be taking this section out so i'm just going to put a little x here and this will be cut at 30 degrees i'll show you that just here in a minute and then let's move down to our end we're going to measure an inch and three quarter down make a mark and then an inch and three quarter and make a mark we'll use a straight edge to connect those two points this is going to be the front of the post where the mailbox actually sits and now we need one more mark and it's going to be from the left hand side we just put our angle we're going to measure three and a half inches in we'll make our mark and then we're also going to make a mark at three and seven eighths this will be the groove that we're going to be cutting into these so we'll take our straight edge or a speed square in this case and just make our line. So we have the layout. This is our angle. And then we have everything that we need to go all the way around. So now we know that this side will be our half lap side. And then this is going to be our angle. Now to mark our grooves on the right hand side, we're just going to go to our three inch, make a mark, and three and three eighths, and we'll make a mark. Then we'll put an X on this very end where we created this angle. The reason why I'm putting these X's here is because all of these other lines, we need to duplicate all the way around this board. The two with the X's, we do not. We're only gonna be cutting from this side. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just duplicating these notch lines and then we're duplicating our 30 degree line on the right hand side. And again, if you're wanting to mark these every time on every side, it's gonna be three quarter, three inch, three and three eighths. And then from the back, three and a half and three and seven eighths. I like to take my square and line it up with the previous mark leaving the width of the pencil and line those back up if you've ever went to buy one of these these things are very expensive to buy and they're very simple to make so this board was 12 dollars and some change maybe close to 13 bucks for this 10 foot four by four like i said they're wanting anywhere between two and three hundred dollars a piece for these miter saw skill saw dado blade there's several different ways that you can make these turn this 12 dollar board into what they're wanting 200 for so before i actually go to the saw i know that i'm going to be cutting a half lap here so i'm just going to go ahead and mark the end of this board so we can use it as a reference gauge whenever we get there and let's mark it out at an inch and three quarters we know that this is where the blade needs to stop for a half lap while we're here we can go ahead and set the depths for our grooves I'm going to make my grooves a half of an inch deep. Again, this will only be used as a reference mark for setting our depth stop on the saw. Or if you're using a table saw, you can use this for setting your blade height or dado stack. So the first cut that we're going to make is actually going to be a through cut. So it's going to go through the full thickness of this material. And it's going to be this little corner here. And that's actually a 45 degree angle. Set your saw to 45 degrees. Just follow your line. So let's go ahead and cut that. So with our first through cut made, let's go ahead and take care of that other X that we put on here. And this is gonna be the three and a half inch section that's gonna half lap our main post. We'll set our saw to zero degrees, and now we'll use our little cut off piece that we had from earlier to set behind this. This pushes the work piece far enough away from the blade, not leave a circular up cut on the edge of our material. And now we'll set our depth stop to the center mark that we had made. And when you're setting your depth stop, always make sure that you are setting it to the longest tooth. So with our depth stop set, we'll go to the section that we've placed our X on, and we'll go ahead and remove that material. Again, this can be done however you'd like, with a miter saw, a circular saw, or 
dado stack. So with our half lap cut, let's go ahead and cut our notches. So to cut our notches, we just need to set our depth stop to the half inch mark that we had made earlier. Now for these notches, there's a couple of different ways that you can actually cut these. You can cut these straight across, just like we did for the half lap, and it'll just be a square look all the way around. Or you can do a beveled look. So if your saw has the capability of beveling, which even a skill saw can do this, let's put 30 degree bevels in instead of straight notches. So now that our depth stop is set at a half of an inch, let's go ahead and right hand bevel our saw to 15 degrees. So with the saw beveled at 15 degrees to the right, let's go ahead and cut the second line in, which is the first line of our notch. Okay, so while we're here, we're gonna do this all the way around. Rotate your board, rotate your board, one more time. So now with our saw set beveled at 15 degrees to the left, let's go ahead and make this second cut. And we're gonna be cutting from this line. Okay, since our saw is already set at 15 degrees, let's go ahead and slide this board on down. We'll be making the exact same cut on this last line. Now we'll just bevel back to our original 15 degrees on the right hand side. We could have made this cut earlier while it set up this bevel, but I just wanted to show you how it's going to turn out. And this is where we're at. Things looking pretty awesome. We have our notch, we have our grooves. Looking good. So just for reference, this 45 degree angle that we cut earlier will be on the bottom. So there's one more line to cut or four more cuts left on this board. That's gonna be these very ends. That will be making kind of like the cap. That's gonna be horizontal, but it'll still be an end cap. And to make this cut, I'm gonna bevel my saw 30 degrees to the left and lift up my depth stock. Quick tip, anytime that you are beveling anything, make sure that your fence is slid over and up to where you can bevel. Or you end up cutting through your fence. We're just going to line it up with the marks that we had made here. Now it's starting to look like a $200 post. And so this is what our first board is supposed to look like. We have our 45 degree angle here on the end. We have our post cap is what I'm going to call it. I said 15 degree angles and then a 30 degree angle. And we have our half lap. So with the hard part out of the way, all of these little cuts, and it really wasn't hard at all. Let's move on to our main post. A lot fewer cuts on that one. Okay, so this is going to be the top of our main post. And again, this main post is 76 inches long. So from the top, we're going to measure three quarters of an inch, two inches, two and three eighths, three inches, and three and three eighths. That's what it should look like. And like before, we'll just repeat these measurements all the way around our board. So with our post cap and designs measured and marked all the way around the board, let's go ahead and lay out the receiving half lap for this board. We'll be measuring 16 inches down, then 19 and a half, which will give us a three and a half inch gap. So with our main posts all marked out, let's head back to the saw. So the last time that we were over here, we were putting this 30 degree cap onto our horizontal board. So since the saw is already set up at 30 degrees, let's go ahead and do the exact same thing for our first line that we put on this board. All right, so with our end cut, now that's all that we have to do is repeat the exact same process that we did for our horizontal board for these two lines. Remember they were at 15 degrees. And we'll also be doing the exact same thing that we did for a half lap on our first board. So an inch and a half deep. And if you've made it this far into the video and you think that I have earned a subscribe, make sure to hit that button bottom right hand corner. And while you're at it, make sure to check out our Patreon community. It is growing like crazy and we're just having a good time. I'll throw a link in the description, so make sure to check that out. Okay, so we only have one more thing left to do on our main post, and that's going to be cutting this half lap. And we'll be doing that in the exact same way as we did for our first one. And I love builds like this from the marketing standpoint. Why? Because almost everyone has a mailbox and they have to be replaced at some point. They're going to buy one because it's unique to see a small business or an individual actually make these. One more piece to cut. This little piece of scrap that we had left, that's going to be our arm support. Let's go ahead and put some 45s on this. Tim, we're going to start by cutting this board down to 14 inches. There's a little over 14 inches of board left. Let's put matching 45 degree angles on each side. So with the saw set at 45 degrees, we're going to start our cut from the longest corner. Now we'll just flip the board straight over, pointed sides against the fence, and make our second 45 degree. All right, so with all of our parts cut, we have our half lap that will lay right on top of the half lap that we cut into our main beam. Now we'll take the 14 inch 45 and slide it right into place. Now that's all we need to do is to attach everything. And to do that, I'm going to be using three and a half inch exterior screws. I'm going to start right here with our half laps.
Okay, so with our horizontal board connected to our main beam, let's go ahead and attach our support bracket. Okay, so I'm gonna be attaching this support bracket with the same three and a half inch screws. So I'm gonna measure in from the end, two inches from each side. Okay, so now to attach our support boards, we already have our screw placement mark. I'm just going to line it up on my board, give it a quick pre-drill, and we're gonna keep this as straight as we can. Quick tip when you're trying to get a hole started on an angle, you may have to start it straight and then give it a little twist and go straight down. And that's all there is to it. So we have taken less than $15 in material and made something that the stores are trying to sell for over $200 just by breaking down and figuring out exactly what they did. And with that, now you can see just how easy it is to build something like this. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this video helped you out a bit and you were able to take something from it. Just because you see something in the big box stores and it looks intricate does not mean that it would be simple for you to make at home. Till next time, guys, we'll see ya.